welcome to the morning show with Kelly and Barbara. It is trending Tuesday and we're bringing you all the good stuff, making sure that you keep up with the times. With dessert stores, specialty stores and gyms closed, our sweet tooth cravings and all sense and sensibility have taken over, but fret not, we are here to rein it in and make sure you're on the right track. Now, for those of you who joined us very, very early on, at first light, we had a nice workout for our beloved seniors. Anyone else miss their grandparents? I miss my popo and gong gong so much. Aww. But not only that, we also had a workout with the good guys from House Athletics. The workouts continue, though, in the afternoon, 3 p.m. You can get a nice stretch with the guys from Yoga Movement. That's right. You can then get your dinner inspiration with Ben Logan at 4 p.m. and wind down with John and Duncan at nine o'clock. But before we get to all that, let's take a look at the numbers. So a quick update on our COVID cases, then 799 new cases, 18 of them in the community. So Singaporeans and PRs, 17 of them work permit holders residing outside of the dormitories and 764 residing within them. Right. It's very important to note, though, that we've got 51 percent only linked to known clusters, which means that the rest are pending contact tracing. That is probably one of the highest numbers of unlinked cases that we have seen. We must do our part, ladies and gents, to make sure that we are doing everything we can to minimize the spread. Okay, there stay we go. Home. Stay at home. Stay at stay home, home and stay safe. You don't safe. have to leave the house. As, don't. I mean, if you're like us and you miss your papa, your gong gong, I miss my mom, my dad. Um, and, and if you're like us and you miss your family, then we just got to do our part and make sure that we rally together to stay strong. Social distance. Mm -hmm. Safe distancing. <laughs> now here on The Morning Show, good things must be shared. We've got a 50% off from a meal from the Black Hole 2 giveaway. All you need to do is like and share our Facebook page on Get Active TV. Drop us a little comment um, and tell us exactly what is your favorite thing to do at home. Oh, favorite thing to do. I think definitely working out at home is one of the good things for me. Like I've really enjoyed being able to work out with my husband a lot more. Actually, how about you tell us exactly what is your favorite workout so far on Get Active TV? Exactly. And if you've been working out a lot or maybe doing a lot of those runs and you've had a little bit of pain in your shin or Ooh. under your foot, it might be plantar fasciitis, but it may be something else as well. Here to clear the air and make sure that we're taking care of your feet, your shins and your body in general is our resident physio from UFIT, Declan Halpin. He'll be joining us just after the break. You're watching The Morning Show with Kelly and Barbara. Don't go away. We will be right back.
morning. Thanks for joining us here on Get Active TV. And by us, I mean myself and resident physio Declan Halpin from UFIT, uh, who's here to talk to us a little bit about plantar fasciitis or maybe it could be something else. I mean, obviously, I know I'm dressed like a sushi chef today, um, but, but I'm here, we've got our shoes off, and we are good to go to, to check out our feet. So, plantar fasciitis, what is it, Deck? Uh, plantar fasciitis, well, uh, I, I guess we probably should start with the reason that, that uh, a lot of people are asking about plantar fasciitis at the moment. Um, I don't know if, if you've noticed it, but I've seen more people running now than, than ever before in Singapore. Yep, I suddenly think. everyone wants to be a marathoner, everyone's yeah. game to do sprints. What, what's going on with that? Well, I mean, it's great. It's, it's obviously great. It's, it's people deciding they want to keep fit, they want to keep healthy, and one of the safest ways of doing that right now is to get out on the roads and jog. But plantar fasciitis is a, an overuse injury. So it comes from doing an activity more than you've ever done it before. Uh, and so when, when that all would this, be most of us. <laughs> yeah, when we all decide that, oh, now this is the month I'm going to commit to doing a marathon and we start heading out, our feet are a little bit like, what, what are you doing? Um, this is a little bit sore. This is causing me a bit of problem. And it can lead to inflammation in the plantar fascia. So what, the plantar, what's, what's the, pl what's the plantar <laughs> yeah. fascia? So, it's, is it a type of botanical? <laughs> <laughs> so plantar fascia is, is another uh, complicated word for something that's really not that, that complicated. Your plantar fascia is the, is the band of tissue that runs from your big toe through to your heel. So it's probably easy to see on your, on your hands. So if you imagine from your, from your index finger big through toe to, to your, your heel, right there. Okay. So in this spot. And its job, the plantar fascia's job, is to support your foot when you move and when you run, it, it creates that arch through there. Okay. And it's also your springboard. So you imagine when you're, when you're doing that bouncing on your, on your toes, that's your plantar fascia that's, that's creating that force and creating that power for you. But sometimes, as I said, we, we get an overuse injury and, and a little bit of inflammation right in its weak spot. And the weak spot of the plantar fascia is right in here where it attaches in onto the heel. So right into that spot. Oh. Uh, and that's what your, your If you press it, area. you kind of, yeah. you, you already feel that sort of like ear. Yeah, yeah, exactly. But if you had plantar fasciitis and you press it, you, I mean, when we have patients that come in and, and, and think they might have plantar fasciitis, and if you push onto that spot, they almost jump off the bed. They, oh, you wow. know, straight away. Wow, that sounds really bad. Like, I, th I think I may have had, uh, have you treated me for plantar fasciitis before? I can't sure remember. I'm not sure, you for a lot of things. But, yeah, I know. <laughs> I'm broken. I'm so broken. Um, but, but yeah, I can remember, I think there was a point where it was quite painful and tender on, on the base of my foot. Mm. So if someone does have plantar fasciitis, what can they do uh, short of seeing a physio? Because obviously you are at this point and a non-essential service. So sad. So sad. <laughs> Um, so there's a couple of things that you can do, but, but what I should say beforehand is, is please check in with a medical professional because there is, is other things that can be masked by, by plantar fascia pain um, or there are things that, that look like plantar fasciitis but actually are something else, uh, in particular sciatica and pain coming from your back. Oh. Because your sciatic nerve actually travels down the back of your leg and, and into your foot and sometimes people come in with foot pain but actually it's, it's originating in the spine. So there's a couple of tests that you can do, or, this, or rather than test key indicators of plantar fasciitis um, that, you should, that, that you can do at home okay. to, to check in. Show me. So the first one is, is, that, is that test where, where you're running your hand, you're finding your plantar fascia, and if I show you how to do that, Kelly, yep. you pull your big toe backwards and just run your hand along the base of your foot and you'll feel that tough line of tissue that goes right into your heel. Okay. If you follow that down into your heel and if you push right into that spot, as I said, if you've got true plantar fasciitis, that will be really sore. You're not going to enjoy that at all. Okay. That's okay. I don't think I have it. Okay. <laughs> what, what else can we check? The second one and, and uh, a big one for people is getting out of bed in the morning. Mm -hmm. Those people who get out of bed and if your first few steps are, ah, ooh, and you can feel that right in, in, in your foot and it's not comfortable, or you get out of bed in the middle of the night and you have to go for a wee, if that's not comfortable, or if you've been sitting for a long time at your desk while you're working from home and your first couple of steps are stiff and sore in your, in, at the base of your foot, that's another indicator of plantar fasciitis. Interesting. Okay, so now that we've identified whether we do or don't have plantar fasciitis, uh, what can we do? Couple of things. So you can see I've, I've bought some some fun toys. I have my own ball because <laughs> I can't use your ball because it's not safe. Obviously, it's very difficult to replace a, a, a physio and going to see a physio. I, I have to say that. <laughs> <laughs> but there is lots of things that you could do at home. And so um, one of the best things you can do is, is to is self-massage and to release that plantar fascia. 
And you can do that with your hands, or you can do your, your loving husband or wife. If, they're, if they really love you, you can give you a foot rub. But Hello, darling. <laughs> foot rubs tonight. <laughs> but if you, you, can, you can get in there yourself. And, okay. and, and so you can... what sort of technique should we be doing? So the key here is to get your fingers behind your foot, and you're splaying the bottom of the foot, and you're releasing the plantar fascia in this direction, out towards the edges of the foot. And oh, that really... feels quite nice. Yeah. I mean, that, yeah, I feel like foot rub feels nice all the time. Yeah. Um, okay. But then, if, if, you, if, you, if you enjoy that, probably a more effective way is to start with a tennis ball. Okay. Getting that onto the bottom of your foot and just releasing in all across mm. the plantar fascia. So plantar fascia starts in your heel and it goes out into the, into the edges of all of your toes. So just That's, working your way around. That feels really nice on the arch of my foot as well. Mm. You know, just sort of like, oh, that feels good. <laughs> <laughs> I, could, I could do this. And is this something that we should be doing anyway? I mean, we've had yeah. Wani Misbun come in and she's been telling us about fascia sort of, and foam rolling and stuff yeah, like that. So, so is, I mean, I, I was going to say at the end, but, but uh, I mean, yes, Kelly. So if you've decided to go running, if you've decided now is the time to go, you should, be do, you should have a self-care routine. And a self-care routine means that when you finish your run or when you start your run, you do a little bit of a warm up. So mm -hmm. you do a couple of uh, exercises to get ready. Um, and then at the end of the workout, you work on those areas that have just been attacked by, by the exercise that you've done. So, so this is a great way of finishing your run or even in the evening once, you, once you've uh, put the kids to bed, just sit in front of the TV and roll it out. Uh, and also stretching. Okay. Really, really important. Question, is this something that little kids can do as well? Because obviously we're trying to wear out our kids as much as possible. So we're going out for runs. We're bringing the kids out with us as well. Is this, is this advisable for, for younger children? Only, only if it allows you to do, the, to do it at the same time, if it gives you a chance to do it with them. The great thing about kids, mm -hmm. super stretchy, super flexible. I've never seen a, 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 you know, a, an under 10 come in to see me with any sort of plantar fascia because their fascia is so stretchy and, and pliable. Uh, so it's yes. great. It's us. It's us, the old people who, who lose that ability. And what sort of age does this sort of problem kick in? I mean, well, as, so, as a physio, is it usually the older people or...? Uh, it's, uh, as a physio, the people that I see, it's predominantly um, those uh, keyboard warriors, people over the age of 30 who used to do lots of exercise, used to do lots of running, take a break for a while and then say, no, this is it, I'm, getting, I'm going back to be fit. I used to do 10 kilometers with my eyes closed. They head out first day, do 10 kilometers, and then they come to see me and tell me that they're in lots of pain. So take your time, be patient with yourself, and be kind to yourself. You don't need to do 10 kilometers your first run. Take, uh, and just build up that exercise. Okay, so I have a quick question. Because you are currently a non-essential service, is there any way that we can get advice? Because, I mean, I'm sitting at home and I'm sat down, uh, I've been scripting for the shows and stuff, and my hips are starting to get tight. Is there, do you do virtual coaching? I know that th this is also a trending thing and it's something that we're gonna discuss later with um, our next guest, but are we able to reach out to you for and sure. get virtual physio help? For sure. Um, it's one of the great things that's happened with the Circuit Breakers is, is we've, we've all discovered new ways of reaching out to our clients and actually found that it's, it's really effective. And it might change, like in a lot of industries, it might change our industries going forward. But virtual physiotherapy works. It works really, really well because it really focuses in on the things that you can do at home to help get better, to help improve your, your issue. And so now the responsibility and the onus is a little bit more on you. And so you end up doing the exercises, and which is great. And this is your biggest problem, right? As yeah. a physio, like you say, okay, yes, I can help stretch you out. I can do this for you. I can do that for you. But you must do your homework at home. And then they go back and they don't do their homework. Yeah. Yeah. Whereas now they actually aren't going to be treated unless they physically do the homework exactly, yeah. all so the time. There's a lot less uh, lying on the bed and, and, and getting rubbed down and a lot more uh, us working with you through Zoom or through, or through whatever video app and watching you do the exercises, make sure you do them properly. And, uh, and patients have been loving it. Well, they've been loving the results, but, mm. they, but I mean, I say to everybody, it's not a true physio session unless you're actually working hard because we're trying to get you better. That's the goal. And let's face it, I'm not going to be dry needling myself. Yeah. So thank you very much, Deck, for explaining uh, the ins and outs of plantar fasciitis. Hopefully for those of you who are currently embarking on your first marathon, uh, then you're taking and practicing that self-care that Declan was talking about. We're going to go for a short break, but if you've been craving bubble tea, I got you covered. I tried, tested the entire recipe. Was it worth it? And did it taste fantastic? We're about to find out right here on The Morning Show with Kelly and Barbara. Don't go away.
Welcome back to The Morning Show with myself, Kelly, and Barbara, uh, who has come back to join us. Yes. And it's now time to uh, basically break down the textbook definition of a first world problem. Yeah, so with specialty desserts like tau hui, your acai bowls, and obviously bubble tea now being deemed a non-essential shop to be open, everyone is suddenly craving bubble tea, even if you haven't had it yeah. for months. Exactly. Like I, I'm not even the biggest bubble tea fan because I find it very, very sweet. Uh, but when I saw the video that we'd played out uh, by MDC Kovitz or Kaviats, or however, <laughs> how, however you want to pronounce that, um, I was like, okay, you know what? I have to try this and see whether it works. Um, because and everyone's I looked, DIYing everything now. Every, everyone's anyway, right? di DIYing everything, but the biggest problem was the likes of Liho are selling at home DIY bubble tea kits for $85. And I'm like, I ain't spending $85 That's on mad, bubble tea. Yo. I do not like it that much. So I decided to rope in Sienna and have a crack at making bubble tea. Was it worth it? Let's find out. Hello, everybody. Welcome to Do Like This. And what are we making today, Sienna? Boost juice. What? Bubble tea. That's right. What's this for? That's tapioca starch, and that's what we're going to use to make the little pearls. What about this one? I don't know. This is gula malacca, and that is what is going to make the bubbles taste really delicious. And do you know what this is? No. This is tea. So we've got some nice loose leaf black tea. It's from TWG and it's called Weekend in Singapore because it's the weekend. What's this? That is brown sugar. That is to make sure that our black tea is really tasty. What? What? Hello everybody. Let's make bubble tea. Okay, Sienna, the first thing we're going to do is make tea and to do that, we need milk. We need milk. <laughs> That's right. So. I've got some fresh milk here, and we need Can one. Can I pour the milk? Yes, we need 1.5 liters. And then we pour it in here. Good job. Good. Now, the next thing we're going to do is put our tea leaves in a tea bag. I'm going to use a reusable one. And a bit more environmentally friendly. And then we pour it all inside. Whoop. All our tea leaves go in there. And we just close it up. You want to put it in? Okay. And then can you pour the sugar inside? Pour it in. Very good. It's very good. Now we're going to put this in boil and let the tea. Once that is brewed, we'll put it in the fridge. So then the next thing we're going to do is we're going to make the pearls. What you need to do is you need to take your water, put it on a small pan, take your gula malacca, Ish cloth whilst we work on the rest of it and essentially what we're going to do is we're going to take the dough 
And then what we're gonna do is we're going to roll it out. It's pre-made pearls. Pre-made pearls, so you don't have to do anything. So after about half an hour of slicing and rolling, we've finally come up with what is supposed to be four cups worth of bubble bubbles. My arms are sore, and I'm so glad that I roped in my muscle. Um, so now what we're going to do is we're going to put them into boil. Uh, I'm just boiling the water now and then these bagels will go in and we'll be boiling for about 20 minutes or so. I am never making bubble tea again. Okay, so here we go. Water has now come to a boil and I'm about to put these babies in. And you have to keep stirring them so that they don't stick to each other, especially at the bottom when they first go in. Once they start to float, it should be okay. Oh my goodness me, it starts sticking real quick. It's gonna be a long wait. Totally forgot to film this bit. Uh, I was just too task focused, but uh, we have poured out our pearls that have now boiled and cooked and they went into ice water to stop the cooking process and now I'm about to make the brown sugar bracing syrup. So all we need to do is to bring the water to a boil and then place in the pieces of brown sugar, gula malaka or muscovado sugar depending on what you're going to use and then just form the syrup by waiting for it to boil. So it's only taken me about two and a half hours in total maybe, but we have our pearls and they look pretty good. So now it's time to put it all together. How long has mummy spent making bubble tea? A long, long time. There is a lot of effort that goes into this and suddenly I appreciate bubble tea shops all the more but we have our finished product, our pearls are here and we are good to actually compose our bubble tea. So essentially what we're gonna do is we're going to, and apparently the trick is to drizzle it all the way around so that it drops down. Drop it in and let it coat everything in there. We're gonna put some ice. This is for mummies. And then here is my pre-made milk tea. So I'm scooping that up in there. Oh no. I mean, I'm not gonna fill it all the way to the top. But then I just take a little bit more and then drizzle it all around the edge so that hopefully we get an awesome cup of bubble tea. Look at that! Okay, my reusable straw. Mmm! Tastes good, you want to try? I think it was a success, but I'm never
never taking Gong Cha or Li Ho for granted ever again. All right, talk me through this. How long did that take in total? From start to finish, about two and a half, three hours. It was ridiculous, like ridiculous. Um, ridiculous. It was really, really ridiculous. Uh, would I make it again? Having tried it and tasted it, like it was really, really, really good. But would I do it again? I think maybe, but it's going to take me a while to get over the muscle ache from rolling all of those balls. And your curls look huge as well. They were massive. Like to suck it up was really hard. This is like the LiHo um, kit that you get. $85 LiHo so kit. The question is, would you rather have three hours of your life and pay $85? Or would you like the satisfaction of rolling a handful of balls and wasting three hours of your life? I, d I, d I don't know. It's, it's to up fair, to you. Yeah, like I heard that the a lot of the tapioca Flower was it sold out? Sold out, right? Like you can't find out. it anymore. Sandra Riley Tang dropped me a message the other day, and she was like, "I saw your bubble tea. Uh, do you still have any left?" <laughs> and I was like, "No, I don't. We drank it all." And she was like, "Oh, don't. Never mind. Um, I need to try and find tapioca starch." And everywhere she'd been to, sold out. Victoria Cheng also tried making it sold out as well absolutely ridiculous um just a quick shout out to those of you who are watching us at the moment yes. joshua you'd actually asked if you have flat or semi-fat feet and you have flat, plantar not fat. No, yeah yeah <laughs> semi-flat feet not fat feet um if you have plantar fasciitis can you still roll out your feet the answer is yes mm -hmm. yes you still can and probably even more so because you've probably got uh well because of your flat feet you've got more of the foot coming into contact with the ground and That's you right. don't have that sort of flexibility and dexterity in your in your foot because of the arch collapsing uh, so very important to roll out your feet if also, you are running keep the comments coming i mean you know we're giving away a 50 percent off to order from the black hole group um, all you need to do is drop us and tell us what's your favorite workout been so far during this whole circuit breaker season mm -hmm. whether well, <laughs> you, you want to make more bubble tea anyway uh we are going to go for a short break so like barbara said keep the comments coming when we come back uh we keep up with our trending topic of virtual coaching and we find out what it really means don't go anywhere You're back with us right here on The Morning Show. Now with gyms shut and people working out from home, virtual classes and coaching are a big 
thing. It used to be where you, know, you could throw a stone and you hit a gym, but now it's two clicks and you've got yourself a Zoom class available. So today we have with us the founder of Level, Alex Salian. Thank you for joining us here today. Thanks, Barbara. How are you doing? With yeah, good, the good. Thanks for having me here. Circuit breaker. Yeah. Are we all coping okay? We're doing great. We're doing fine. You know, like um, in the midst of all of this, we still have um, remote and virtual coaching. So, yeah. Uh, before we get into that, maybe you can just help us break it down. What is the difference between remote coaching and virtual coaching? Okay. So with virtual coaching, it's literally the same thing as uh, personal training. The only difference is that you're not standing in front of your coach physically. Right, so it's the same coach um, watching your movement patterns, uh, the same coach programming for you, uh, doing everything in the 60 minutes or whatever time frame that you guys have, um, just on a screen. Okay. Right? So that's virtual coaching. Um, with remote coaching, it's a little bit different. A lot of people have taken to remote coaching because of um, how affordable it is. Mm -hmm. um, but basically, it's a couple of steps. Um, more, I think, than virtual coaching. There is an initial consult with the client mm -hmm. um, where we understand where you are with your lifestyle, your sleep, your nutrition, um, you know, your goals, what you're here for. Um, and then past that consult, it might take about 30 to 45 minutes, uh, we might ask you to do an assessment, mm -hmm. uh, a movement assessment. We, we want to know how strong you are. Uh, we want to know where you are with your cardiovascular health, so on and so forth, right? And then once you've done a series of tests on your own, you'll send the videos, you'll record yourself doing it, send uh, it over okay. to the coach. Yeah. The coach will then assess and get to work by, you know, understanding how you move, whether you've got issues, can you squat, can you push, so on and so forth, right? And then we get to work by programming. Right, so we may come up with a weekly plan, a monthly plan. It really depends. Mm -hmm. um, right, and then there might be a nutritional consult post that. And then obviously, uh, with some remote uh, clients, we, we catch up mm -hmm. um, once a week, once every fortnight, sometimes once a month. Uh, some clients prefer to catch up over Zoom um, and actually see a coach online. And yeah. Some people just prefer a quick text. Um, sometimes it's a phone call. So it's really up to you as a client which you prefer, right? So you're, you're, you're really training day to day um, through a platform, an app, mm -hmm. right? And you're looking at the stuff that your coach has programmed for you, has designed for you. Yeah. And then at the end of that session, you might text your coach and say, didn't understand part B, what do you mean, right? Um, so that's the difference between virtual and remote. I hope that makes sense. Yeah, so I think the thing that I found interesting is that, especially with you know how life kind of functions on Instagram nowadays, you we see not so much in Singapore but overseas. There's been a huge trend of remote online coaching for a long time. It's yep. it's not new, yep. but I think it's something that's only recently popped up for us over here. Mm -hmm. um, I think one of the questions I have is. I mean, Level has always been very unique in the way that uh, you train your clients. You know, I've, I've trained with Level for, for quite a while, and I absolutely love how technical you guys are. Um, do you find that there is any form of difficulty taking that level of technicality that we usually get one-on-one -on -one in the gym to how people train at home now? Um, no, I think actually this is the best time to understand your bodies, right? Without the use of equipment, without the, you know, um, the ability to get lost in a crowd of g groups of people, right? Mm. If you have a coach online looking at you, like say in, in virtual, right? You're literally like being watched on screen Stress. and you can see everything. It, you know, it's the same thing, That's right? That's the reason why I didn't uh, sign up for one-on-one <laughs> -on -one coaching to begin with. There is uh, so much stress that comes with it. Yeah, so you know, you've got clients who have never really zoomed in on how to properly do a squat, right? Mm. How to properly do push-ups, so on yeah. and so forth. And then suddenly you've got no equipment at home and you have to kind of like scale back all the way down to the basics, right? Mm. Like work on your mobility, work on, you know, tempoing your squats, yeah. work on all of that before you attempt to do more advanced things like dynamic stuff, dy dynamic work, box jumps, burpees, so on and so forth. Mm -hmm. So Level obviously does, um, you know, kind of like remote classes at the moment, mm -hmm. um, as does every other gym that, that we've known of. 
Um, but I guess, like I said, you guys are very are known for being very technical. And I think with the individualized programs that you were running prior to the lockdowns, or sorry, the circuit breaker, um, how are you guiding your coaches? Because running a session with someone online is very, very different from being physically there with them. And I know a lot of group class coaches have struggled to make that switch to the online platform. How do you guide your coaches, um, or how do you coach your coaches to making sure that the, the clients that they have for you know the remote coaching and the virtual coaching are still getting that same level of attention? Well, I think to sum it all off, um, the biggest, if not the most important point uh, or factor to that is the connection that you have with your clients, right? Mm. Uh, that's the biggest driver that we have with all of our coaches, right? If you don't connect with your clients, then yeah, so we always try to get all of our coaches to connect, reach out, keep in touch with the clients mm -hmm. once a week, drop a text, whatever. Uh, it doesn't have to be conversations about coaching. It can be, you know, um, a quick call about how you, how are you coping, right? Um, how is your <laughs> mental health? Are you sleeping? Are you not waking up to, to train in the morning? If not, why? What, what can I do as a coach to, to help motivate you? Yeah. Um, or how can we get around it? You know, sometimes the conversations is about you having too many bubble teas. Uh, <laughs> well, right? let's not go into that, shall we? <laughs> uh, so on and so forth. So, so what we try to do is, is, is our roles as coaches is not to tell you to do five sets of push-ups followed by five, five, five sets of burpees, right? That's, mm -hmm. Anyone can do that. Yeah. Um, our jobs as coaches is to guide, coach, and mentor you, right? So if that means the physical aspect and then the mental well-being and then, you know, what you put in your bodies, what you drink, what you eat, uh, so on and so forth, right? It makes up this big universe of your well-being. And I think that's very interesting because when people talk about like having a, a personal trainer or a coach, it's very much they just think, okay, yes, this person is just going to tell me to do five sets of this number of exercises multiple times over and over or do burpees for an hour. Mm -hmm. um, so I think it's very interesting and in the approach that you guys take um, on that very wholesome, personalized level. Now, you mentioned that uh, remote coaching is not new um, and you've been doing it for a really long time and it's a more affordable option. Um, and I think especially now that there are people who are going for a lot of group classes, but r removing that physical aspect um, does create some barriers for people. Um, how affordable are we talking when it comes to remote coaching? Because you're getting a personalized program um, but, you know, what the setback for a lot of people is, oh, it's going to be so expensive. Mm -hmm. So how affordable are we talking? Well, right now, as we speak, I'll be honest with you, there are a lot of options, right, with, with, with uh, classes, right, mm -hmm. online classes. I'm not talking about a coach programming for you. Online classes have become so cheap now, right? There's this dilution of what it, uh, what it is. Yep. Uh, so obviously, we cannot compete with a $5 class. Right, but that's not what you would pay a coach to do for you anyway, right? If yeah. this coach is looking after your fitness, your health, uh, trying to follow up with your nutrition program, trying to make sure that you're on track during this period. Um, Basically help you guide through life. <laughs> yeah, yeah, exactly. You wouldn't be paying $5 for that, Yeah. right? So uh, the standard remote coaching rate is roughly $400 a month, mm -hmm. right? And this would mean, you know, check-ins, um, programming, four to five days a week if need be, mm -hmm. uh, so on and so forth. Um, obviously, we're running promos for that as well because people who are so uh, accustomed to just group classes, they, they, they don't understand what remote means and they just want to get their feet wet. So we welcome them, um, you know, just by giving like, like, yeah. Dip their toes in the yeah. water, see if we like this. Yeah, you know, so, you know, you can find all of that, all the details of costs and, and, and promos and all that on the uh, on Level's website, so mm -hmm. level.com.sg. Um, so, yeah. Awesome. Well, thank you so much for joining us here today. Yeah, thanks for I think that me. was it was very insightful in learning the differences um, and also the level of help that we can all get on that is available out there for us. So we are going to be taking a little bit of a break. When we come back, Cheryl Lowe and Kelly break it down on how to get that booty pop in with your glute bridges. Don't go anywhere.
thanks so much for sticking around here at Get Active TV. We are helping you to stay healthy in mind and body, and that's why we decided, in addition to all the workouts you're doing in the morning and afternoon with us, we would also provide you with an in-depth breakdown of certain exercise movements to ensure that whilst you're working out, you're actually staying safe as well. That's right. So earlier on, Kelly spent some time working on those booty gains, what to do, what not to do, and how to make it real tough. Hey guys, welcome to today's Break It Down segment with Cheryl Lowe joining us this week to break down the essentials because we have so many incredible workouts for you in the mornings and the afternoons on Get Active TV, but we seldom have the time to actually break down the different movements to make sure that you are doing them correctly. So today, Cheryl is going to be teaching me the hip bridges so ah. one of the common body weight exercises are actually not that common because a lot of people forget about working on a posterior chain so for the hip bridges it's going to be working on a lot of your lower back muscles butt and the hamstrings actually and all the trouble area yeah yeah i was gonna yeah, say that, that this that's part me. <laughs> yeah and yeah. it's quite interesting because there are a lot of uh home workout programs that focus a lot on the front of your yes. body uh, a lot of abdominal work a lot, a lot of stuff basically involving the front chain of your body but yeah. your back always gets neglected but people forget that it's actually your hamstrings and the posterior chain which helps you to move like yeah, on a daily correct. basis so even when it comes down to basic things like walking you need all those muscles behind you too yeah that's correct so we're gonna be working on or rather breaking down this particular exercise itself into small different parts and again working on how to activate the right muscles okay so there's always a lot of ways to do a certain movement and most people just follow you know follow a video follow and you know, watching online classes like that you want to make sure you are uh, using the right muscles okay. to make it count okay. yeah so uh we're gonna start in a lying down position okay yeah it will be demonstrating for me yeah <laughs> I just take my position on the floor yeah so like oh you, you enjoy this for now yeah so this, nice. <laughs> this feels great guys like this is perfect position yeah so from here like laying down heels mm -hmm. towards your butt that would be okay. the starting position so mm -hmm. what we want to do are the common mistake a lot of people when they go for the hip bridges when you bring your butt off the ground uh, you'll be feeling like you're sliding forward slightly mm -hmm. if you now now that your feet's on the ground that's fine because you're not sliding at all yep. um, you want to make sure your feet stays in place and pulling your heels in actively yeah so Ooh. when you keep pulling your heels towards your butt this it's way really, you're gonna feel the hamstrings mm. yeah so that is the important part of this uh, exercise so hamstrings and the butt coming down first so uh, you want to make sure when you're going for the hip bridges think about hips upwards okay. hips to the ceiling instead so. of using the thighs to kick off Right. Yeah, you don't want the thighs to. So you don't want to be like. Yeah. You don't want to be thrusting so up you, like that. You uh, want to otherwise, you feel your feet moving on the ground, or if you're doing with the, if you do it with the socks, even better. Socks on the on the floor, uh -huh. uh, it forces you to keep your feet in. Yeah, without okay. sliding down. So, feet in, activate the hamstrings and drive yes. upwards with the nice. hips. Okay. Yeah, so it's an upwards motion, not so much of kicking uh, your, with their legs and actively keeping your heels. You cannot see from here, but uh, it's just actively keeping the heels in towards the butt. So that's good. Yeah, it's all on the hamstrings and uh, the glutes and the lower back, which is very important to work on them. Yeah, so this is actually the basic version. Okay. You ready for the level? <laughs> level two. <laughs> <For> the level <laughs> two. <laughs> you can come back right. down first. <laughs> so okay. that, well, uh, you can do this uh, two different ways, either holding in position or uh, going for like 10 reps. Okay. Yeah, 10 so reps if we do 10 up, reps, just all the simple. way up, all the way down. And you have to make sure your feet stays in position without sliding out at all. So going up, highest point, and another common mistake, uh, some people go up to a bridge, as long as the butt's off the ground, they count that as a rep. Like but I, yeah, I, I don't usually count that as a rep because you're not uh, fully utilizing the muscles. So you want to go up all the way, highest point, squeeze the butt, and then come back down. And it's almost like I can't really see the end, right? Yeah. It's, it's a straight line from almost like my shoulders, really, to my knees. Yeah. 
So with your with your hands up just now, um, that's level two. Oh right, okay. Yeah, you can even keep your hands up in front of you, facing up. So this way, it you're gonna weight. feel a little bit. Oh, that's <laughs> not at your level. <laughs> that's good. Yeah, you can do the upper body at the same time. Why not? Um, yeah, so that's level two, and that's uh, you can rest first. Okay, you got a that's lot great. of energy. That's okay, um, one foot up, ankle on the knee, and the, so the third, the third level, level three. Ankle on the knee, single leg hip bridges. For those who have been working on the glutes, you're going to find that basic bridges are too easy. You can move on to this one. So single leg, same concept. Heel is actively pulled towards your butt. Keep your heel in towards your butt. This is a lot harder. Yeah. And because you have done like, I don't know, 10 reps on this side, you got to balance it out on the other side. And <laughs> do it on the other side. Yeah. <laughs> So same thing, highest point, upwards motion, it's not a thigh kicking move, movement, so it's an upwards butt towards the ceiling, and a heel is always in towards your butt. So those are the few points that you always have to take note when you're doing this exercise itself, to make sure you're using the right muscles and not wasting energy. Awesome. Okay. Yeah. Does it get any harder than this? Yeah. So this foot straight up. <laughs> <laughs> I, reg I regret. Asking. <laughs> I regret asking now. So okay. keeping your foot facing up towards the ceiling. Think about foot to the ceiling on top of you. So straight up. Because like some people, when they try this for the first time, you'll find that you're kicking backwards or moving back too much. So think about upwards, foot towards the ceiling, straight up, and you'll be doing it right. So you want change to make sides, sure your change heel sides. <laughs> <laughs> change sides. You want to make sure a heel and the butt distance remains the same the whole time. So your butt and the heel always stick together, remain the same the whole time throughout the 10 repetitions. I'm trying. I'm really trying. Yeah. <laughs> this would be a Doing fun one to try and balance like a tissue paper on. Oh yeah, so um, right. sometimes I get my uh, personal training clients to balance my phone on top here. My phone, not their phone, <laughs> so that it's more pressure. Yeah, yeah I <laughs> so can you imagine. So you have to really keep it up there. Yeah. Whew. Okay, yeah. that's quite a workout. Okay, what if someone has knee pain, for example? Like, I can understand how some people, if they're maybe not doing the exercise correctly, they may struggle with that tightness in the knees when they're pushing off. Is there anything that they can do to modify, maybe move the position of the knees around, the legs around? Um, if you, yeah, if they have knee problems or knee pains when when attempting this exercise, then I would suggest to just hold it in position first. Yeah, the, uh, if let's say you feel any knee, knee strains, that's when you know that you, you're using the wrong muscles or you're putting the pressure on the knees instead of the, on the hips. So the pressure or the weight should be on the hips, lifting the hips up instead of standing through the knees. So just a static hold like this. Yep, so that, that will be good enough and make sure you keep the knees apart. Okay. Yeah. I guess in this position, if you really wanted to work the inner thighs, you could also work on doing like some clenches and stuff like that, right? Yeah, I think there are some uh, fitness, tiny little fitness equipment that you can find online. Yep. Those gadgets that like allow little balls you to do that. or yeah. even like sponges or even if you have a cushion. Yeah. I guess there's a lot you can do to train your posterior chain in this position. Well, I'm going to stop and <laughs> take a pause. And thank you, Cheryl, so much for teaching us how we can activate our posterior chain. Remember, if you have a crack at this one maybe take a photo take a video and post it online we want to see how you guys are incorporating all these movements at home and hopefully you've just learned how to break it down did you feel the burn i definitely felt the burn the ache was so real after doing so many reps like seriously i think i was probably doing it for like eight minutes there pretty a bit ridiculous but hey no pain no gain right uh, that is absolutely true I actually really like glute bridges. Really? Especially like when you have the resistance bands around mm. your thighs. It kind of makes you put that extra work and then you really feel it Squeeze. on the outside of your bum. Mm. <laughs> There's nothing quite like uh, climbing out of bed the next day and falling over because, yeah, because your bum can't actually hold you up. And on that note, we're going to go for a short break. And when we come back, it's time to take a moment to ready, steady and set yourself for the rest of the day ahead. Don't go away.
Welcome back to the morning show here with us on Get Active TV. It's Trending Tuesdays and because we've gone with this whole theme of virtual coaching, mm -hmm. doing things online, be it physio, be it actual personal training or, or self-improvement for that matter, uh, it's quite interesting to note the, the sports, sports industry. Exactly. <laughs> sports that have been stripped from our lives that There's we no can more. no longer watch. Uh, There's nothing playing on TV anymore. You can't watch football, you can't watch the NBA, you can't watch golf, you no. can't watch anything. Everything has just been taken away from the sports fans. But what you can do now is watch virtual sports. So sports like Formula One have taken themselves online. The Matua Madrid Open Virtual Pro, that went online as well. And that's pretty cool because these players are actually playing themselves. So it's kind of cool to see it actually playing out, but not really. It's like next level FIFA. Yeah. Speaking of FIFA, I'll get to that in a second. Don't forget, Porsche Carrera Cup also went virtual with Singapore's very own Yui Tan. Uh, mm. So he's actually got his full livery, like his car. This is his home wow. setup, which I think is pretty badass. Uh, so he's got like a full bucket seat. Uh, he spent looks so happy just to be sitting in it. <laughs> in a chair, right? So he's actually spent... I think it was like 12 hours practicing and training oh, wow. on the circuit uh, in, in order to actually get into it. I think for his race two, he actually came second as well. So he's getting good results, not Ooh. just on the racetrack in real life, but also on the virtual, virtual seats as well. As well. That's and like you said, like you said, FIFA also online. If you haven't seen it already, we've got our One Play Sports One Play Pro Cup Challenge. Uh, so far, all the seeded teams have qualified in this FIFA 2020 Challenge. Uh, you can also tune in at, at 11 p.m. We've got uh, Patrick Kinghorn and Nis Nambir on Tuesdays, Thursdays and Saturdays. So round, uh, round of 16 starts next week. Exciting times. Very exciting Good luck stuff. to all of our competitors. Uh, we've got a, still got a whole host of things coming up this afternoon for you. So make sure that you're sticking around here on Get Active TV. It's Tuesday. What does that mean we've got? It's Tuesday, which means we've got what you're cooking in the kitchen at 4 p.m. so you can get all your dinner inspiration. I know that as the days go by, you kind of run out of ideas on what to cook. So that's why Ben Logan is in with us every Tuesday and Thursday on what you're cooking to give you some inspiration. We've also got our daily workouts at three o'clock. Mm -hmm. So you so can get a good sweat plenty session. Plenty of things for you to do. But from Barbara and I today, we're going to call it wraps. Remember, it though, make sure that you're staying safe, stay strong and, and stay, stay at, at home. home.